let's talk about how we can get drones into the hands of our students and into you, our instructors here at Cal State Channel Islands. By way of background, it's important to say that we really are in a unique place here at CSUCI. Sometimes it's easy to, to lose track of that. We have policies that we've developed that others are copying across the state and across the region. We have unique facilities like our barn out here at Camp Park. We have deep partnerships with a whole lot of uh, industry folks, with government agency folks, etc. And we have a lot of talent here. We also are taking a very different approach than most of our sister campuses to this technology. We do not view this as the purview of the engineering department or, or one particular group. We view this as a general tool. We take a broad educational uh, eye when we look at this technology and we truly are interested in the interdisciplinary use of this technology and how it might benefit folks all across campus. Before uh, the most recent missive from the FAA, the Federal Aviation Administration. This is the situation that we had here at CSUCI. We've created the Unmanned Systems Board, which is analogous to a Human Subjects Board or an IRB that we um, use when we want to do polling or human subjects testing, something like that. So the Unmanned Systems Board exists to help you achieve your goals, exists to make sure we're doing that safely, any kind of research or teaching we do here on campus. Applying for that, assuming that you're going to use this technology, these flying robots, these drones, or also what we call unmanned aerial systems or unmanned aerial vehicles, all the same thing. By the time you apply to that board, it's assumed that you have whatever FAA permits that you would need to fly if you're going to fly outside, and almost all of us are flying outside. Indoor flying here at CI doesn't require those those uh, you know FAA permits, but it's been a challenge. So my classes we've been able to fly indoors, but it's it's not been trivial. We we don't have a huge number of open spaces that are open all day long that we can get into at any old time of the day or year. So it's been a challenge. The other challenge has been um, the uh, craziness that's emanated from the FAA. So before May the fourth, twenty sixteen. The FAA considered the faculty, you and I, commercial operators. They also considered students commercial operators, and therefore we all had to go secure the permits that were required for the folks that are doing real estate uh, photography, Hollywood movie filming, whatever the case may be. That translates into needing special permission in the form of so-called 333 exemptions, certificate of authorizations, etc. After May the 4th, um, things are quite different in, the in an educational context. Now, we really only need those 333s or other exemptions if we're doing research or we're engaged in a, in a faculty research activity. You and I are still con considered commercial operators, even in the context of a class. Um, I'm, we are paid to teach, so we're considered commercial folks, but our students now have been reclassified in the eyes of the FAA as being hobbyists, meaning they do not need to have all the additional permissions and, and, and operate under the constraints that commercial folks do, which is fantastic. So that means that most classes don't need any special permission to fly. We have our CSUCI policy of, of having the Unmanned Systems Board approve such things, but um, but the FAA says, you know, if you're going to go use this to, to film a, a dance competition or, or image some flowers at the top of a tree, uh, you don't necessarily need special permission for that. So that's awesome. So now it says that you and I, the faculty, we can't do the main flying for the class, but we can jump on the sticks if something is unsafe or we want to correct something. But again, the idea is that the students would be doing the operation of the equipment. The students would be flying the drone up to the top of the trees to image the flowers, for example. This will continue to change as the FAA releases in the upcoming weeks slash months slash years. We'll see when, they, but it seems quite likely it'll happen this summer. New so-called Part 107 rules, and that should make things even easier for those of us doing research and other things.
It's important to note that people's concern about drones are real. There's a lot of trepidation out here. In this case, this is a picture from the uh, LAPD when they acquired drones. They purchased their drones from the Seattle Police Department, but they didn't pay attention to what they're doing because the Seattle Police Department purchased these drones and the public didn't want them, didn't trust them to use these things, so they weren't allowed to use them, so they turned around and sold them to LAPD. And then people said, you know, what's going on? That's not how we operate here at CSUCI. Again, uh, this is fairly common, broadly writ. This is from our service learning class in the Cook Islands this past, uh, this past summer. This is a gentleman who was flying. This, this is a phantom, the sort of poster child of drones. This is him flying his drone for the very third time after he purchased it. So he purchased it, put it on a plane, went in the middle of the South Pacific. This guy, when I took this picture, was on his way to be very high. I don't have another picture because it was so far up, you couldn't really see it. This guy was over 450 feet in the air. This is at the end of a runway. Um, and this guy didn't know what the heck he was doing. That type of irresponsible operation of this equipment, bugging people, putting the environment in danger, putting people in danger, etc., that's ridiculous. That's what we're trying to avoid. That's why we want to better engage with this technology in our classes to teach our students how to responsibly and respectfully use this equipment and technology. We've confronted this directly, as I've mentioned before. This is our policy on unmanned aerial systems that created our board. And we really, truly try to confront these things first and foremost here at CSUCI, not hide from them. That's why I'm reaching out to you guys today and hopefully engaging you um, in some conversations with um, this technology and how you might want to use it uh, in the upcoming year. Sometimes the conversation focuses on technology. We do in our labs in ESRM, we do a lot of um, uh, development of technology, but do not think of this, this thing as some techie thing, as some computer science thing, as some engineering thing. Everybody can take our, our classes, in this case, this is ESRM 370, uh, students to figure out how to safely operate this, but these tools um, should not be confined to the classroom. These tools, in this case, these are some of the robots we brought to the Cook Islands to help some of our local villagers uh, better understand their environment, map and understand their environment. These are really, really useful things that can bring lots of benefits to folks across our society. Not only are we interested in, in flying things, we're also interested in how we can explore this technology, better understand it, influence the, the course of this technology. This data is from our, our annual uh, opinion polling about the coastal zone. And we asked folks, hey, what do you think about uh, these little drones flying around? Two to one, people have a negative view of this when they express a view. But the important story is not the negative and positive uh, impressions. It's the fact that when you add the people that are neutral and to the people that are unsure about this technology, that's two thirds of our population here in, in our home. Two thirds of the people don't know yet if this technology is good or bad. So by engaging with this technology, we can help inform this conversation. This data is from our just completed national poll of people's attitudes towards drones. And what you see here is that uh, very consistently we see people think that uh, people doing EMS, uh, fire, search and rescue, that kind of stuff, those folks should be using this technology to improve um, their, their doings of things. So 94% so of the general public think that we should be using this, that an appropriate use of this technology is in that context. Followed very closely, uh, barely statistically significantly different from that, are universities. And, and higher ed using this technology. So the public really think we should be using this. And I would say, quite frank, frankly, they expect us to be using this and expect it, us to help them uh, work through this technology, what is appropriate and what is inappropriate. If you haven't yet seen our blog, please go to our, uh, our May the 4th post um, on our aarr.piratelab.org. Org um, explains the, the FAA ruling. I have the text there transcribed, so you can easily look at it, copy it, uh, go over it. And then we've just posted our drone educational intent form. So if you're thinking about use, even if you're not positive, you're just thinking maybe I might want to use some drones in some classes next year, um, go ahead and fill this out and this will help us help you get that conversation going, figure out how we can do that and how we can help you do that safely and responsibly. So I'll send this link out along to everyone in a second and hope everybody has a good day. Please reach out to either Jason Miller or myself if you guys have any questions at all. Love to help you work through this technology. Love to help you uh, better use this new gift that we've been given. Given, um, to better improve student learning and student outcomes. Thanks a lot, you guys. Talk to you soon.